Good evening everybody and welcome back to the Scottish Football Pundit podcast with, with yourself being the viewers and today me being me as per usual bringing the latest news around Scottish football and the action to you is myself Connor Kilter. Now tonight we have for you a wee bit of um, transfer news around Scottish football tonight and also we also have tonight the second Champions League encounter of the season for Celtic facing a team from Hungary called Ferenci Varos in Celtic Park which they've got to take kick off this evening for them the first bit of news this evening that I have here for you is that former St Johnston, former St Johnston, is probably now being manager, Dave Mackay, has became become the new Dundee United assistant manager alongside um, James McBeth at Dens Park. Um, Thoughts on that based on everything that's went on surrounding Dundee and with over the coronavirus, etc. But um, rid of Jim Aim, experienced Jim and Echo alongside a few of the players like um, the Kane Hemmings and you know, another couple of again, experienced players that they had at the club last season. Um, so Seeing Dave Mackay come in as the assistant to James McPake at Dennis Park is a bit of a surprise to me. He's done well at the Beatles over the last couple of years when playing in the um, Scottish League 2. He's, he's done well at um, Fourth Bank and gave them a, a decent enough playing squad. <coughs> also with they had a decent management team up there that's still on and finished in a decent place in the table over the last couple of years. Face it up as well as um, I've seen them play when they faced um, my local side Edinburgh City at Ainsley Park Stadium alongside their um, Spartans football club play their home games. Um, that's where Edinburgh City have been playing over the last couple of seasons due to the fact that their home stadium, Meadowbank, is getting currently re- um, refurbished and renovated as it was knocked down and they're rebuilding a new Meadowbank literature centre for the people of Edinburgh and for Edinburgh City which will be good for Edinburgh City. Edinburgh City have lost the gym, their sporting director and a big big face at the club was Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries was the sporting director at Edinburgh City over the last couple of years and they have lost Jim Jeffries to Hearts as he's now the advisor on the board of directors at Hart Midlothian alongside Dan Dodge and the board of directors at Tincastle. Um, Edinburgh City have got a decent club, a decent club, a decent fan support and a decent management team. I would like to see the team, that team progress and for the fan base to keep developing over the next couple of years and to see Edinburgh City, to see Edinburgh City grow bigger and bigger with their fan base and manage get a bit um, bit of management and also get more play um, better and more experienced playing staff in the club to bring the to bring the club up the leagues and that would eventually like to see Edinburgh City playing in the top flight of Scottish football, which I hope is the aim for Ed- for the for the um, directors and the board at Edinburgh City for the next couple of seasons is to see 
of the club keep developing and getting um, more experienced and ex-players on the board on the board in the likes of what they had former Hearts manager and Dunfermline manager, experienced manager Jim Jeffries. I had Jim Jeffries there as the advisor over the last couple of seasons to move to progress the club and to bring in more experienced players and bigger names and the likes of former Hibs at a um, striker Danny Hanlon, Danny Galbraith, Alex Harris, um, Cal Mantel, Scott Shepherd, um, Robbie McIntyre, uh, Connor Balatoni, and big names like that, and Josh Walker, players like that. They have got a good squad, but I would like to see that squad keep developing and to be one of the best, like, not one of the best teams in Scotland because it is going to be hard for them to get the money around that for the club but I would like to see the club keep developing and using the youth infrastructure of the Scottish game and keep developing up the, up the weeks over the next couple of years. Personally, I would like, um, like, I would like to help Edinburgh City again where I want to see them play for the next couple of seasons and help them out with like, the infrastructure and like give, trying to increase the fan base for the football club and to give them more of a reputation for the fact is to keep to gain their reputation in the Scottish leagues and to make them a bigger club and the likes of I would like to see them eventually being the size of like Dunfermline Athletic, Inverness, Caledonian Thistle, a team like that where they're they're not the best team in Scotland but they they're there, if you know what I mean, like they've done something in Scottish football to make them a bigger name with a bigger fan base and get them get their actually own stadium built, etc which will be hard for the club in this financial times as they don't have the financial infrastructure as what some clubs may already have in Scottish football but on the likes of the people that are already at the club they have with and the manager James McDonough and the chairman etc they are doing okay at the moment but I would like to see them keep increasing and to be a bigger club over the next few years um, and yeah guys also the next thing I want to talk about is Australian right midfielder former Montrose player and currently plays for Hibs very good right midfielder for Hibs at the moment one of the one of the favourite players at Hibs and, and one of the fan favourites at Easter Road and that is Martin Boyle. Martin Boyle has today signed a new contract at Hibs and extended a t- to stay and sign another two year deal to under Jack Cross and Hibs and to be honest that is good for the for their football club and for Hibs to see to see another player like Martin Boyle, Scott Allen, Stephen Mallon, players like that continuing to stay at the club instead of moving on to better things and bigger things where the nights just Scott Allen and Stephen Mallon we they could we, they've got the potential that they could actually move south of the border to bigger and better things when they got in the English Championship or League One and continue their career and build their way up and the likes of what um, like the former player John McGinn and Jason Cummins and stuff has done and to be honest I think that I thought that Martin Boyle was going to do that this season but he's showed his commitment to Easter Road and the Hib supporters by signing another two year deal and being true loyal to the fans and signing a two year contract extension at Easter Road 
which is good and a lot of the Hibs supporters will be happy to see that tonight. Um, no, there's nothing really I can say about that apart from he is, um, he's been superb for Hibs this season so far and I'm surprised that he hasn't signed for Celt um, Celtic yet to be honest. I thought that because he played under Neil Lennon I thought that Neil Lennon would have signed him for Celtic to be a replacement for James Forrest if James Forrest was injured because as you all know James, James Forrest is kind of injury prone and he does sort of gain injuries as well, at international level playing for Scotland as well as domestic level playing at Celtic and European football as well as playing domestic football in the Scottish Premiership. The next thing we'll talk about is the Motherwell saga with their young, young 21 year old midfielder and that is David Turnbull. David, tonight I've read on the transfer news that David Turnbull tonight, today has not trained with Motherwell Football Club and instead skipped training today and there has been over the last couple of days rumours of another move and speculation of David Turnbull wanted by Neil Lennon and the Celtic Football Club to bring him but to bring him to Celtic Park and this season like what they were trying to do last season before he failed his medical with his knee injury and he was out for quite a quite a long time and eventually got fit again at Motherwell and they started this season tremendously. Um one of the best players at Motherwell right now and the only player that has actually done something for Motherwell over the last couple of games. Um, if if he is to go and he is to leave Motherwell and leave Stephen Robinson's team, uh, that is going to be a big a big loss for Motherwell. But they need to they need to go into the transfer window and find the re the suitable replacement for David Turnbull and hopefully get the right amount of money that Motherwell are looking for and Stephen Robinson are looking for without selling them too cheaply and also hopefully get a selling clause for David Turnbull as he, that player is going to keep progressing he's going to go from Celtic to the Premier League I can see it happening he's, in a, he's, going to, he's got to be another Kieran Tierney and Andy Robertson of Scottish football that player is absolutely sensational he's going to, he's, Got the potential to play in the English Premiership. He's got he's got the potential to, to play at an international level for the Scotland national team, and everything that you're looking for in a young footballer. David Turnbull has that. He's got the he's got the right mindset. He's got the right he's got the pace. He's got the power. He's got he's got everything that you look for in a midfielder and in a Scottish player and a young player. And it's a fun, if if a team like Celtic get him, it, that is a bargain for a team like Celtic to get him for at least one point eight to two million pounds that I've read over the last couple of days in speculation whether whether Motherwell sell him for at least two million. That's two million pounds that Motherwell can't afford to really turn down, as that is a a big a big transfer budget for Motherwell a £2 million pound transfer budget and to bring in better players to progress their team and to keep fighting to try and get another European spot this season as well as doing well in the Europa League which we will be trying to do this season with Stephen Robinson they haven't really started this season that, long, that great to be honest and not really been on the best of form they haven't scored in 4 out of the 5 games and the only player that's really done something this season is David Turnbull, they've got the best, they've got the best Motherwell squad I've seen over the last couple of years this season, and if they're not going to do anything, are they, and if they lose David Turnbull, and they keep, if they keep losing games, and if they lose their only key player, which is David Turnbull, what are, they, what are Motherwell supposed to look at, and is, and the thing that the Motherwell board and the fans need to think, is Stephen Robinson the right man to continue leading 
being the right man for the job at Fir Park is he the right man for the job to to keep Motherwell going and and to be honest He's not done really that well. He's getting frustrated at the players. He's getting frustrated at himself because he's not get he's not getting where he wants his players to be this season. The only player that's doing something for his club is David Turnbull. They're looking at selling David Turnbull. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I'll be surprised if Stephen Robinson either doesn't walk out or he doesn't end up getting sacked from Motherwell after the start of this season and the way that Motherwell started after. He's got he's got them back into European football the first time in three or four years, and also one of the best teams at Motherwell Football Club have had over the last couple of years. There is no excuse for a team like Motherwell to be losing one 0 to a team like Hamilton, and uh, especially at home at Fir Park. I know that there's no fans there underneath under the coronavirus rules, but in the at, at the end of the day, you can't really say anything to that is Motherwell should be winning games like that and at home with the team and the management team that they have they've got, they've got a lot more better players and training facilities etc than what Hamilton Academical have got and they got beat 1-0 off of Hamilton uh, the last weekend in the, at home in the Scottish Premiership the next one I want to move on to is our winner is he's, he's a young player, you know, he's a Rangers winner at the moment and we signed him from Liverpool for seven million pounds. That is the one and only Kent Kent, it will tell you apart again Ryan Kent. Ryan Kent, fantastic player, big crucial player at Rangers. He's he's got the pace, he's got he's got the ability, he's got everything that we need at the club at the moment. He was a big crucial player for us. This is a big season for us to stop Celtic from winning 10 in a row. It's a big season for the club to do well domestically as well as European football. It's a big season for Steven Gerrard and Gary McAllister as well as the full squad this season. This is the biggest season that Steven Gerrard has had since he came on board as the Rangers manager. If is is the team that we've got right now good enough to compete with Celtic to stop them from winning 10 in a row and to keep doing well in European football? I don't know. I think that we need to sign on at least another two or three key players to compete with Celtic in domestically and to keep doing well in European football. But at the end of the day, if the one thing that we need to do, two things that we need to do right now and that Steven Gerrard needs to focus on it's to keep Ryan Kent the Ibrox, keep and reject the bids from Leeds United unless we get at least 20 to 25 million which I think that is worth at the moment. If we get 20 to 25 million, then we can really no turn that down. And the thing that we need to do as well is after everything that's went on and that this player over the last couple of years with having 53 red cards over the course of three seasons playing at Ibrox and he's not done he's not done anything in an old form derby against Celtic in. He, is, he has been the crucial player, he has been the player that we have rely, relied on over the last couple of years for Rangers and that is the, the Colombian striker Alfredo Morelos. Alfredo Morelos hasn't really done well, really has done well for Rangers against other teams and in European football apart from against Celtic and ever since this at the start of this transfer window with the rumours of the team from France wanting to sign him for 18 million. The club will. He's not. He's came back not in the best shape that he's came in since he signed for the club. He's not. He's had his head turned. He's not. He seems not interested in training. He seems not interested in the club at all. I feel what I've, what I've heard from Steven Gerrard and what I've heard from the players in the in the press 
etc. is that he wants out of Ibrox, he's demanding to get away, he wants that move to France. So, is, is this the season that we should get rid of Alfredo and continue going forward under Kimar Roof to serve the K10 and Brian Kent? Yes, I think so. I think that we need to get the. I think we need to cash him in now rather than later. Is the way that he's going right now. He's just going to keep. He's not going to do anything he wants out. So just get get the money for him where we can. Hopefully get twenty to twenty five million for Alfredo, which he is worth. Get rid of him and use that use that cash that that we got for Alfredo into signing another two two or three key players to help us on the way to get 55 and to and to, for European football in to we have got the squad the, the best squad that we've had in a numerous amount of years and I think that it is a squad that is going to take over if we don't do anything this season do I think Steven Gerrard needs to go yes I do He's not done anything for Rangers since he's came in, apart from in, in domestically. He's won a couple of old funds. He's, he's progressed us in European football. Has he got anything else to, for Rangers if, if, if he doesn't win the league this season and do as well in the Scottish Cup, the League Cup and European football? If he doesn't do well this year, this is, the, this is the season for him to prove himself as a manager to the fans and the board at Rangers and to the rest of the Scottish Football League. If he doesn't do well, then I think his time's up in Glasgow. If he doesn't do well at Rangers this season, and Celtic won 10 in a row because this is history-making season for Celtic. And that is a big season for Celtic and Rangers to compete to win this league title this season. There's no, there's no ifs, ifs or buts about it. It is the biggest season since we have came back up, it is the biggest season in Scottish football in a numerous amount of years. Celtic have won the title nine, nine in a row. They've won the treble, treble. They've won everything. They've, they've got the bragging right to Glasgow. They've had everything over the last nine, nine years. It's now time for Rangers to prove that we are back where we belong. We are back to bigger and stronger than before. Fighting in European football, fighting domestically, winning the league title, winning the Scottish Cups, winning the League Cups and having the fan base behind us, having the Ibrox sold out 24-7 at every single game once we're all back. Getting behind Steven Gerrard, getting behind the management team, getting behind the players and having the passion and the belief of the football club as bolstered said the famous words, we will let, let them chase us, we welcome the chase that is healthy for us, we will never hide from it. That is that is the truth. And he also said we will have our years of failure and when, and when that happens we will come back bigger and stronger. And that has happened. We have had our years of failure. We have came back and we are stronger than what we were before. Now, this is for Steven Gerrard and the bo and the players that are playing in that park to prove to us and the and the rest of the world that the Rangers are back where we belong and get fifty five and stops and stop Celtic from winning ten in a row and show them who the biggest team in Glasgow and Scottish football is. We we are the people. West Brom, the next one I want to move on to is West Brom interested in, are interested in signing the young six foot something centre back from Celtic that had a long, couple of loan deals at Kilmarnock a couple of seasons ago. He began to get first team football at Celtic regularly. He's doing well for Celtic foot, and domestically and in European football. He is getting game time at Celtic. Is and should should Celtic cash in on him now sooner rather than later? Yes, I think so. And that is Christopher Ayer. I think Neil Lennon needs to get the money for him to get the money for him and to 
me, and to get the money for them and me, to sell them and bring in a, bring in another centre back in the likes of where they are looking at signing just now is is an a, a Irish international and bright and experienced bright experienced Brighton and Hobart will be in centre back and that is Shane Duffy. They're looking at bringing Shane Duffy to Celtic Park and if he does sign for Neil Lynn inside that is a good player because he has got the experience, he's got everything that you're looking for in a player and he will we will play good alongside Scott Scott Brown. Rick Park here. Um, the next thing that we need to talk about is Aaron Hickey wanting to make the one point a one point three million move to Bologna. He's he's told he's told the cut with hearts that he's no want he's no want to, stay, um, to be at Bayern Munich. He's no want to be at Hearts. He's no want any any other move apart from to be at Bologna. And Hearts have been offered the one point three million move for the the young Scottish left back and. He has he, since he got his Hearts debut two year a year or two years ago under Craig Levine, he has done tremendously. He's one of the best left backs that we've had in the Scottish game in the numerous years, apart from Kieran Tierney and Andrew Robertson. Um, and I see I see Aaron Hickey continuing to develop as a player. Should I, in my in my opinion, and obviously because I'm a Rangers fan, I'm trying to say this in an unbiased way. I want to see the Scottish youngsters doing well for the, for the future of international football for Scotland and to see Scottish football getting bigger and a more reputation in general for for us to keep progressing and to see this league getting more and more and more fans following from around the world and for Clubs like Hearts and Motherwell to get to get the money that to keep to keep them going and to get them better players to keep competing against the bigger clubs of Scottish football, the likes of Celtic Rangers, Aberdeen, um, and the likes of that. Should should Aaron Hickey go this season? No, I don't think so. I think he should stay at Hearts for another season and try Championship level football. And expect and get more game time and more experience as a footballer to progress him as a player and to get more more football and more game time under his belt. I don't think that he'll get the game time at Bologna this season. And I think that the most the most best thing for Hickey to do this season would be to stay at Hearts under under Robbie Nielsen and Lee McCulloch. Um, the next and um, last but not least, we're talking about the team Celtic. Celtic's European game tonight at Parkhead. They are playing a team from Hungary called Frenzy of Varos or something like that. A team from um, Hungary that are might be a big side. They've never the two clubs haven't met before. Hot for, former Hibs goalkeeper Adam Bogdan plays for them. Um, I seen that today, um, and I want. I'm wondering if it will be a good game tonight. T- will, will, will they give Celtic a game? Probably. I've not seen them play before, but hopefully they do. Hopefully Celtic progress, as it's good for Scottish football, for the Scottish clubs to keep progressing in European football for the Scottish League and for us to get more more money back into Scottish football and to keep to keep getting the Scottish League up and getting the Scottish game more reputation and getting more viewers so that we get more games on TV and end up having a decent team like a, a decent country for football just like how down in England with the FA They've got they've got the money, they've got the T V, they've got the sponsorships in there, that's what we need up here. Oh if not oh, even better than that. This this the way that the SFA is running the Scottish football is corrupt. They need they need to do something about it, they need to change it, they need to 
bring somebody in that knows Scottish football, that knows how to progress it, to, that knows how to change the infrastructure, to, to bring more, more sponsorship in, to bring TV deals in, to get more fans from around the world watching from far, from, from global wide, to get, to get the Scottish League recognised as one of the best in the world. That's what I want to see for for Scotland, and I want to see the Scottish international team doing well, and come and end up competing in the Euros or a World Cup that they haven't done since France. I think it was ninety six or ninety eight. Um, they haven't competed, and that was against Brazil the last game that we that we done something that big for the international team. We need to the Scottish. Everything in the SFA, the Scottish international team, and teams from around Scotland need a bigger, a bigger fan base, a bigger infrastructure, a bigger support from around the world, and to get more money back into Scottish football to help the to help the youth academies, to help the small teams like Motherwell, St Johnston, your Hamiltons, all Dundee United, all these small teams. And the likes of my junior, like junior teams and the part time sides like Edinburgh City, Stirling Albion, getting more money back in it to the Scottish game to help the teams like that to to make the Scottish League bigger and more interesting than what it has ever been and to make it a lot better and a lot more entertaining to watch and like a lot more competitive than what it is at the moment. It's, it's quite boring to be honest and that's why a lot of fans from around the world aren't really interested in Scottish football and more interested in the German League, the English Premiership and teams like the Italian League as well, Spanish League, the Bundesliga, the La Liga. More, they're more interested in the in the type, types of game because they've got good infrastructure, they've got good youth academies, they've got They've got the money, they've got sponsorship, they've got everything that you want in in football in these countries and that's what Scottish football needs. We need something like that. We need people like me doing doing YouTube videos talking about Scottish football, trying to get the Scottish football out there, trying to create it, trying to create content for fans around the world to keep watching and to enjoy. We need, as a fan, this needs to change. We need something done sooner rather than later. Instead of Scottish football keep keep on deteriorating and going downhill right right now like it is, and it's not good to see. I want to see us doing well as a country, as a nation, through at an international level, domestic level, every, everything from junior football to full time football. In Scotland, I want to see them well and have the money and the infrastructure and the sponsorships and the TV right deals all around. Whether that happens, we'll need to wait and see. Then the SFA need to try and do something about it to make that happen. Whether, whether that happens or no, I don't know. Yeah, but they need to put their hand into their pocket sooner rather than later. But that's that's not for me to say, that's for the SFA to say, and that's for other people around, around Scotland and the world to say to the SFA but that's what that's me done um, what do I think the score's got to be tonight in the European game at Celtic Park tonight I think it'll be a 2-1 two, two win for Celtic I've heard that um, odds on Eddie Ward might not be playing tonight I don't know if that's a rumour or, or if it's true but we'll need to wait and see I will be watching the match if it is live on TV I've not checked if it's live on TV yet but I will try and find a way how to watch a match and I will probably do a post-match thoughts on the game and talk about the game and the highlights of the game etc. If not, it will be a video made tomorrow for you guys. As, as I say, and as, as it said in the bio for the YouTube channel, I'm trying to create content for you guys to make the reputation of Scottish football bigger and to get, and to make you guys laugh and for you to for you to create for, for me to create content to give to you for you guys to enjoy and to keep this going bigger. Let's make this channel grow from as small as it is right now and try and make it grow to be one of the biggest in the world. That's what I'm wanting to do. Keep keep giving you guys content and keep talking football and not giving up 
and trying to pursue my career which is in TV and radio football punditry and that's what I want to do for you guys and I want and this is the start of it and I would like to share my journey with you guys from now to being high up and hopefully being better than the Chris Suttons and your Chris Boyd and Daryl Curry of Sky Sports and BT Sport. I want to become bigger than that and your Peter Martins and your PLZ Soccer, your open goals, your off the balls. I want, I want, I want to have my own, I want to have my own channel, I want to have my own radio channel, my own radio programme, my own TV programme. Hopefully end up working for Sky Sports and talking talking live on TV where, where you guys will be watching and going, oh I recognise him from YouTube, years ago etc. And hopefully that does happen in years to come guys, but if it, it won't happen if I don't have the backing but for, and the support from you guys, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm asking for, is for the backing and the support from you guys and make, and make that happen and make this journey happen and get, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep commenting down below and keep keep trying to build this channel up and get it, uh, get as far around the world as we can and keep getting fans to view it and keep talk keep talking football and get Scottish football recognised around the world and hopefully keep you guys having good content and hopefully you guys keep enjoying my videos that's what my plan is and hopefully you enjoyed this video today sorry for having probably a rant if you thought I had a rant but me being myself, Connor Kilter, this has been the Scottish Football Pundit Podcast. I've enjoyed doing this video today for you guys and hopefully you enjoy. Like and sub like it, like the video and comment down in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next video. I'm out.